I have a peak off. I have machine learning. Oh, peak machine learning. Hello and welcome to my channel, Hardware AI. This is another video in know-how series which focuses solely on a specific feature or technique. And today I will tell you how to use neural networks trained on Edge Impulse platform with new Raspberry Pi 2040. Edge Impulse is a platform that enables developers to easily train and deploy deep learning models on embedded devices. You can watch full introduction of the platform and how to use it in my first video of the series about TinyML. Now, let's jump straight to action. I have Raspberry Pi, I have Raspberry Pika on my table here, and also I have the uh, the Grow Shield for Pika, which makes it convenient to connect various modules to the board during the prototyping phase. We are going to use the model I trained uh, in the first video of the course, uh, the Rock Paper Scissors Classifier with Light Sensor. I shared this project publicly, so you can access you can access it uh, if you follow the link in the description. If you go to Deploy tab, Deployment tab here, you'll see a few options available, such as Arduino Library, Cube AI, CMSIS Pack. Uh, and also C++ library. There is no Arduino ID support for Pika yet, so the only viable option uh, for us is uh, the portable C++ library. Let's choose that option. Um, enable Ion compiler, build and download it. All right, so it is downloaded. It's a zip archive with a library inside of it. And on your Linux machine, or in my case, this is the uh, virtual machine with Ubuntu 18.04. Uh, first of all, we're going to prepare. Um, this is, uh, I haven't used res uh, Raspberry Pika on this machine yet. So I'll install all the necessary dependencies. Well, first of all, I'm going to create a new holder. I'm going to call it GitHub. Um, then I'll start by cloning uh, Pika SDK to that holder. Just do git clone. Um, basically, for this particular for this particular step, you can just follow the, uh, uh, the guide for SDK setup. Um, so you'll need to initialize the submodules. Then after that, um, we will need the examples. Um, we will need to install all the necessary uh, dependencies and the tool chain. So we'll just execute that command. Uh, now, an important step is to set up Pika SDK um, environmental variable, and you can just uh, do it in the current bash terminal like that um, although i do suggest uh, you uh, specify the full path so that basically will be home ubuntu github pika sdk um, or if you are going to be using uh, pika sdk extensively you can add it to bash rc Bash RC file basically um, the content of it gets executed on when whenever you open a new terminal. So we can just copy and paste here. We can use the command line and echo uh, this line to Bash RC. Uh, both work. So now if I open the new terminal, uh, actually I will already have that. Uh, export command already executed in this new terminal. Um, so after that, we see to GitHub, right? Uh, and then we will uh, need to uh, 
uh, clone the example inference template that I made available at example standalone inferencing pika. Again, let's execute another git clone. All right, so that's done. Uh, now, if you remember, we downloaded the uh, C++ library. And now, and now let's copy it, copy the library to our virtual machine to standalone inference in Pika, and then extract here. Okay, this we need to put everything except for CMake lists. The three folders here. Okay, let's delete that, and we don't zip archive. Great. Well, now let's cd to that folder. Uh, let's create build directory. Build and uh, cd to build directory. All right. And from build directory, do cmake two dots, which means execute cmake in upper level folder. Sometimes, especially on Ubuntu 18.04, you will get the uh, uh, CMake version error uh, problem. If your CMake version is lower than 3.13, in my case, I have 3.10. So we will need inst to install a newer version of CMake. Uh, and you can do it with snap packages. Snap CMake Ubuntu. All right, after installing the latest version of CMake, you can execute that command and uh, it will successfully create make file for you. And then we can just do make comment. After compilation process finishes, uh, you can find the firmware file, uh, doc you have to file. Um, it's called hello ML because it's the name of the project and the build folder. Now, while simultaneously pressing the boot button here, connect um, your Pika to computer. In my case, I want to connect to virtual machine and remember my choice and never ask me again. Now we have, we will have this uh, device appearing as um, so we'll need to copy that you have to file to newly appeared storage device called RPI RPI2. Let's do that. Great. Still want to connect the virtual machine. Remember my choice and not and never ask me again. You can now connect to Pika with Arduino ID serial monitor or use other serial tools. For example, Pika.com. It doesn't matter which uh, tool you use uh, for uh, reading the serial output. Well, I'll use Arduino ID because I have it installed already. So I'll just choose the ports and open the serial monitor. All right, perfect. Then we will see the following output. It means that the inference is working properly. The code performs inference on a sample data, which you can find on a sample data, which you can find here, if you go to raw data of the project I shared publicly, then you will see that this is the first window of paper sample, uh, belongs to paper gesture class. So here are the values, and you will also be able to find uh, exactly the same values. If you, lo if you look inside of main CPP file, all right, so these are the values. So currently, um, Pika board is uh, performing inference on static data, and we see that it's working properly. Uh, now, you can and probably will say, but I don't want to perform inference on static data. I need to perform inference on my own data. Well, I got you. I wrote another example, and you can access it by uh by switching to another branch in the same repository so do git check out light sensor that's light 
underscore sensor. Great. Okay, so we checked out to light sensor branch. And if you look in the source file, you'll, you'll, you'll see that um, there is difference here. Basically, uh, before we had the static data, and now in raw feature get data function, actually what we do is um, in the for loop, we get the data from uh, ping A0, A0 um, on, on the expansion board here. Um, and after reading the data, we uh, save that the received data into features array and then copy it uh, when we perform the inference here. Um, so we will connect uh, the light sensor I have here to ping A0, which is the analog input ping. It's already configured. Um, now, again, same drill. Basically, we're just uh, going to create a make file. Right, so let's do CD build. Let's remove everything in that directory. And uh, do CMake. And make again. All right, after it finished building, it's the same drill. Basically, uh, now disconnect Pika and connect it again while pressing the boot button. Okay, done. Go to build folder. We have our a newly built firmware. So let's put it here. Okay, done. And open the serial monitor again. Now we will see. So uh, now currently Raspberry Pi, uh, Raspberry Pika is getting the data from the actual light sensor here uh, and performs the inference on the data. So I'll try, despite this is uh, another model of the light sensor. The model was trained on the light sensor in wire terminal, so it will not perform very well um, with a different light sensor, but I can still have a simple demonstration. Like currently I am doing the paper gesture and that works pretty well. Uh, let me try scissors, this one. And what I remember scissors See, there's right. Scissors works okay too. It doesn't really work with rock. I'm doing it rock now. The model actually worked really good with wire terminal, but uh, for using different light sensor, it needs to have uh, more training data. So. Don't leave yet, there is more goodies. Since for your own project, you will want to get the data from sensors and you might have different sensors in mind to use. I also have an example data forwarder. Um, let me open the GitHub repository. Um, so you can read more about data forwarder in, uh, in Edge Impulse documentation. Basically, it's uh, it's a protocol that allows you to send uh, to send the data to Edge Impulse platform as long as it follows a specific specific format. Then you can send any data that you want. So basically, uh, the format is really simple. As you see, on uh, every line, every line is a data packet that can have many data points, which are separated by a comma or a tab. And then in the end of a data packet, there is a new line character. So you can you can you can you can do it in any environment that you want. They have the Arduino uh, example here, and uh, if you go to my GitHub and uh, Git clone example data forwarder Pika. Let's close this for now. Um. So I'm going to go to GitHub, the Git clone of the data forwarder example. Great. Uh, so same drill. 
you can have a look at the sources if you'd like, data forwarder C. It's really, really simple. Basically, it is based on uh, ADC example from Pika examples. We just get the ADC reading from pin A0, and then we use printf to send it over USB serial. Um, we do it, uh, we do one reading uh, in one specified interval of time. Uh, currently here it's uh, set as 25 milliseconds. So for example, if you want to add more sensors, more sensors, um, you need to remove that new line character and then have this instead. You would have print result one and then print result two. Uh, and then here you would have the new line character. So that would be sending three data points in one packet. Oh, and, 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 and don't forget to have the comma character here. Okay, so that's correct now. That's, for example, sending three, um, three different uh, data points from different sensors in one data packet. All right, I'm just going to return it back to the original state. And then it's the same drill. Basically, again, make build deal, make build deal, and uh, CD there um, to see make and do make. That's going to be really fast because this is really simple code. All right, so we have the UF2 file in build directory. Now let's take the Pika, disconnect. Press button button, connect. And copy the UF2. Perfect. And now if you open the serial monitor, now if you open the serial monitor, you'll be able to see the data printing out. Um, so each data packet only has one data point, which is a single reading from a light sensor. And obviously, you can change this example to fit your um, sensor and your application. Finally, for the most curious of you, a short explanation on how I created um, this uh, inference example for Pika, because originally it's, it's a very new board and there was uh, no examples on the internet on how to use Edge Impulse. Uh, with, uh, with, with Pika board. So that might be useful for you if you are, uh, if you want to use Edge Impulse on another board that are not supported yet. So first of all, I modified, first of all, I modified the CMake lists. Uh, what I did here is that um, I took all of these uh, directories that are necessary for Edge Impulse, like the modal data, uh, the um, folders, for classifier, for CMSIS. Um, so all this data I actually took for from another board, CMake lists file. And uh, what I did, I also added the uh, Pika SDK import, Pika SDK init. Uh, these lines are for enabling the output on USB and disabling the output on UART. Um, and then uh, there is an, uh, the last line here that uh, builds a uh, F2 file. So basically creating uh, CMake lists. That's the first step. And also what I had to do is to add EI classifier porting uh, file, which is present in uh, Edge Impulse Inferencing SDK. And basically here we just have a few functions uh, such as EI Retimer, uh, MS, milliseconds, uh, US, that would be a uh, microseconds, and also we have the printf function, uh, malloc, calloc, and free. Uh, basically, what I had to do is just to um, to pin uh, these function placeholders to the functions from Pika SDK. So, for example, this is how we, um, for example, in case with Arduino, this read timer. MS millisecond would be just uh, return millis, would look something like that on Arduino. 
uh, but we don't have Millis function on uh, Raspberry Pika. So instead, we're going to use this, and you can find this information usually in documentation for your board's SDK. And then if you search for this, for this documentation, you will be able to find uh, the functions that you need. For example, if we look for that 2ms since boot, Yep, I'll be able to find it here. Convert the time step into number of milliseconds since put. Um, so basically, having these files after that, um, I took the uh, I took the content of the inference of the classifier inference from Arduino. Basically, when you download when you download your trained model as an Arduino library, as I did here. Two examples, and there is uh, this. This is the library I downloaded for another video. There's static buffer example, which performs inference on the data with the classifier model. Uh, basically, I just copied copied the content of this file and changed all the Arduino functions to their equivalent uh, with. Pika SDK. For example, uh, you can see that uh, in Arduino we use delay, uh, and uh, for Pika SDK we are using sleep milliseconds. So just different functions, but uh, different names of the functions, but they their their usage, their purpose is the same. If I can do it, so can you. You don't need any external hardware to run these examples. So if you already got your Pika, try it out. If you haven't, you can buy it on Seed Studio website together with the expansion board, and it will come to you in this nice package. Good luck, and I'll see you next time.